anytime you prepare any medication or vaccine, always start with the basics. Make sure that your hands are clean. You can use alcohol-based hand rub or soap and water hand wash. Also make sure that you have cleaned and disinfected your environment. Make sure that you are using an EPA registered hospital grade disinfectant uh, for that purpose. Also you should have some kind of a tray or container so that you can put your prepared vaccine in and then uh, take it to the site of administration. It's much better than, than letting it sit on a countertop. For MMR vaccine, this is a vaccine that you will reconstitute. That means you will have the actual vaccine vial, and it's a powder in the vial, and then you will reconstitute that using the diluent that is provided by the company. Now the diluents are not interchangeable, so always make sure that you have the right one for that purpose. Neither one of these have a preservative. This vaccine also is kept under very controlled temperatures because it's a live vaccine, so you must to prepare and administer it very quickly. So follow your protocols if you have any questions. All of that is outlined in the prescribing information or the package insert, and you can use that as a reference. But generally speaking, once you remove a live virus vaccine from its controlled environment, you prepare it and administer it within 30 minutes. If it extends beyond 30 minutes, then you need to go back to your protocol to see, do I need to throw that vaccine away or how much more time do I have to use it? That's why it's very helpful to have a label, not only to show you what you have prepared, what is in this syringe, but also it enables you to add those elements um, such as the time of the date and time of preparation. All right, let's start then with how we will reconstitute this vaccine. The diluent then will come in a box. There will be uh, 10 uh, in, a, in each box that's delivered. You just will use one one vial of diluent for one vial of vaccine. Once it is prepared, it is one dose. It is a single dose. So anything that is left over, you will not save. You will discard. Remove the caps. And again, your hands will be clean. Remove the caps from both the vial and the, the diluent. Make sure that you have a sterile alcohol swab available and that you want to disinfect the, the top of both. Use friction uh, for about 15 to 20 seconds, then set it aside and let it dry. Do the same thing with a new alcohol swab for the vaccine. Again, 15 to 20 seconds of mechanical friction and then set it aside and let it dry. While that, during that drying time, then you can go ahead and prepare your syringe. You will have a sterile needle and a sterile syringe. Open them both the way that they were designed to be opened. You peel them, and again, you never punch them through. That can end up contaminating this sterile item. Remember, your vaccine and preservative and, and um, diluent will not have a preservative. So anything that you contaminate will ultimately contaminate that vaccine, and that is what you will administer to that patient. So infection control is very important. So open both your needle and your syringe. Now for subcutaneous vaccines, we use a very small needle. It's almost always a 5 eighths of an inch needle because we are going to be going to the area above the muscle, underneath the skin and above the muscle. Make sure that you are looking at those no touch zones and keeping your fingers well away so that you can screw that needle and syringe together. Again, very snugly, but not overly tight so it doesn't crack. You will pick up your vial of diluent and then withdraw all of the diluent. Now I usually tip my syringe over to the side. That enables me to pull in all of the diluent and then I can kind of make sure that uh, I'm a little bit more controlled in my movement and then I can uh, inject air, any air back into the vial to, until I get out uh, the diluent. Most of the time the diluent vials will, will have about 0.5 to 0.7 cc's. You can set that aside, and again, you do not change your needle, so make sure that you are keeping that needle uh, very well away from anything else. Then you, you can inject your diluent into your vaccine vial. Leave your needle and syringe in, and you will just gently swirl this. It takes about 20 seconds for the vaccine to uh, dissolve into the diluent. And then just keep it moving gently and again leave your needle in, in the, uh, the vial and keep your fingers well away. After that has dissolved, you can tell that, that MMR vaccine has a very taint, a faint amber tint uh, to it. That's, that is normal. 
Again, I kind of tilt my, my needle to the side and make sure the tip of my needle is well below the level of the fluid in the vial and that that way I begin to actually fill my syringe with vaccine and not with air. So your desired dose for MMR is 0.5 cc's on, on your syringe, so make sure that you know where that, that is. It's the, the black mark right across from 0.5. I also make sure that I have no air in my syringe. If I do, I want to inject it back into the vial and then make sure my plunger, the top of that plunger is directly across from the 0.5 line. And then I inspect my syringe to make sure that I have no air in it. Only then do I go ahead and pull it out of the vial. Okay. So you can see 0.5, no air. We'll pull that out. And then this is a clean needle. So I have not used this on a patient. So I'm able then to recap this in some way. Some of you have learned to do a, a one-handed scoop method. However you have learned to do this, just make sure that you do not contaminate that needle. If you do, you have to throw the whole vaccine away, not just change your needle. Now your prepared vaccine is going to be ready for use. You can use one of your labels to put on this syringe. You never want to have a syringe that is unlabeled because no one knows what it is. Make sure that it is labeled at the time because this is very time sensitive, a, a live vaccine. So make sure that you put the time that you prepared the vaccine as well. And then make sure it is in a container so that it is ready for you to transport to your patient. So when you're ready for administration, again, make sure that your hands are, are clean. Identify your site. MMR is given subcutaneously. That is generally in the middle third of the upper arm. You're going to identify the area and then just kind of give it a pinch. You're pulling that sub-Q area away from the muscle. You should have your alcohol um, swab readily available so you can disinfect the area. I always keep a sterile 2x2 two two available just in case I need it if there is a little drop of blood or if there is any a little bit of leak uh, from the vaccine. You have your prepared syringe that is labeled. You verify the time and the dose. And then you are going to be injecting at a 45 degree angle. So remove your needle cap pinch your area, and then you will go in at a 45, not a 90 degree angle, but a very flat plane, 45 degree. Make sure that you do not contaminate your needle. Once you insert the, the needle, you can go all the way to the hub, the entire area into that sub-Q tissue. Inject the entire amount of vaccine, and then once your vaccine has been, has been completely injected, let loose of the tissue and pull the needle out. Then you've got your 2x2 two two readily available. You can put over the site and then apply your Band-Aid. Anytime you are preparing medication or vaccine, uh, make sure that you start off with a few of the basics. Always make sure that your hands are cleaned. You can use an alcohol-based hand rub or soap and water hand wash. Uh, make sure that you have cleaned and disinfected your environment. Make sure that you are using an EPA-registered hospital-grade uh, disinfectant. Also make sure that you have a container so that you can place your prepared vaccine in for transport. It's much better than uh, letting it um, sit on a, a countertop. Make sure that you have evaluated your patient and you know how, how the, the, the muscle mass of that, that individual so that you can make sure that your needle length is appropriate so that you can actually deliver the vaccine into the muscle and not into the subcutaneous tissue. For most children, you will use um, a 5 eighths of an inch needle. Uh, once the child becomes uh, adolescent, uh, has a little bit more body mass, muscle mass, then you'll need to uh, evaluate them more closely and perhaps have a longer needle, perhaps an inch or uh, for very large children, uh, up to an inch and a half. Make sure that your equipment is available. If you are going to draw vaccine, then make sure that you have the, the needle and syringe readily available. Influenza vaccine um, is in multi-dose vials or in pre-filled syringes. 
I'm going to go through then the elements of dealing with a pre-filled syringe so that you have uh, that readily available in, in your mind to use for these initiatives. The vaccine is uh, preservative free, so that means your technique is very important, so infection control is critical. There will be a tip on the end of this vaccine that you will just, with your fingertips, twist off. Now make sure that you don't go at it with your fingers because then you may contaminate that no touch zone that is underneath the tip. So gently twist the tip off and right before you remove it, make sure that you have your needle readily available. Open them, peel them like the package is intended to be opened. You do not punch this through because then you will contaminate this, this sterile end of this sterile needle. So peel it back, kind of like a peeling a banana. And then you can remove the tip of your pre-filled syringe and then immediately twist on the needle. Now make sure that you take a moment to make sure that it's secure, but not overly tighten it so nothing cracks. If you want to get the air out, you certainly can do that and then place it in your, your container for transport. Now, if you want to uh, label the vaccine, if it's something that isn't readily apparent, then having a, a uh, either a pre-printed label or a white label, something that you can apply uh, to that vaccine. You may want to even indicate the date and the time that you activated that syringe so you know precisely how long you have uh, to use that before it must be either administered or, or discarded. Put it in your transport tray and now you are ready to go and administer it uh, to your patient. Influenza vaccine is administered intramuscularly in the deltoid. So you want to first identify your landmarks Put your ring finger on the acromion process and then drop your thumb down so you've made a C. This is the, should be right at about the bottom of that deltoid muscle. The deltoid is a, a, like an upside down triangle. Put your ring finger at the notch, drop your thumb down for a C, and then your goal for administration is going to be right in between those two areas. So you've identified the landmark, you know the body mass of your uh, student or the person receiving the vaccine so you can select the right needle length. Make sure that your hands are clean and that you have your alcohol swab, a sterile alcohol swab to disinfect the site. And I always keep then a two by two and I'll put it underneath my ring finger so it's readily available for me after I have injected. You will then make sure that you have your prepared syringe that is labeled and if you have any time uh, that need, needs to be indicated uh, that will be on the label just to make sure that you are using that within the appropriate time frame. Make sure then that you uh, have your, your finger on the landmark so you can again identify clearly where to administer the, the vaccine and I always keep my hand on uh, directly on the patient. Make sure that you remove the cap from the needle when you are immediately ready to use it. I can put it in my other finger and just get it out of the way or if you need to just drop it uh, on a nearby surface. I can readily see the landmark. If I need to pull that tissue down and make it a little bit tighter, I can. I'll go directly at a 90 degree angle. Uh, the the uh, needle will go all, all the way into the hub, uh, especially for smaller uh, children where you are using either a 5 8 or a 1 inch needle. Uh, and then inject the vaccine. If you have learned a, a technique where you aspirate, you can certainly do that, but it is not required. And then uh, inject the vaccine completely. You pull the needle out, you move your two by two down, and then activate the device with a one-handed method uh, at the same time. That way you are protecting the patient and you are protecting yourself. Then you're ready to apply your Band-Aid.